grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship with North Little Rock First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Lynn Kilborn, and it is a joy to worship with you this morning. Thank you for worshiping with us. I thank you for worshiping with us. And as always, I want to give a special thank you to all of our staff, especially the staff who were present in our worship service this morning, John Knorr and Stephen Carr, our worship leaders, Pastor Annie Lankford, our associate pastor, Jay Wedeman, who is running our camera and making all the technological things work, and to Megan Herson, one of our children's ministers, who will be sharing a children's moment with us later. I'm glad that they are here. I'm glad that you are here. And I would love for you to tell us that you're here. We invite you to sign in using the Connect card. You'll find our Connect card in our link tree, which is in the comment section of this video. As you click on the link tree, you'll be taken to all of our active links. But as you go to the Connect card, you may share your information with us and any prayer requests that you would like to lift up. So thank you in advance for taking time to sign our Connect card. We have uh, today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and of course, the season of Advent is the season that that guides us in preparing our hearts for the celebration of Christmas. And so, we are gearing up to celebrate Christmas in our Christmas Eve services this Thursday. We will have three Christmas Eve services to which we invite you. Two of those services will be outdoor um, drive-in services, one at three and one at five o'clock. Both of these services will have we will be able to sing carols share the sacrament of communion and even be able to end with a candlelit singing of silent night we will also have an online worship service available that day we'll be on facebook live here at seven o'clock on christmas eve if you're worshiping with us online we would love to share with you a worship bag with communion and with a candle and a special prayer for you as you worship along with us at home, those worship bags will be available um, at our main entrance behind our rose garden. You can pick up those bags on Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. This morning, we are, uh, we are focusing or we are sharing information and highlighting the ministries of Methodist Family Health. Our church has long had a connection with Methodist Family Health, but we have strengthened that connection over the past, over the past year. John Knorr and our music ministries have regularly collected items, needed items, to donate to their work. Stephen Carr and our youth ministries have connected with Methodist Family Health as well. Today we are highlighting their Share the Light annual special offering. And normally we are able to share an informational insert, an envelope into our bulletin. But this year, the Methodist Family Health has shared a video that that we can lift, that we can share with you, and we're excited to share their video this morning. It features our own Pastor Annie Langford, who is one of their new, one of the new members of the Methodist Family Health Foundation board. I face one of the most shattering uh, and life-altering experiences that any parent has to face. Uh, it was when my son attempted suicide. Um, thankfully, he didn't complete it. And I, I, was, so, I was so grateful um, that my family didn't have to face any of this alone. We, we, had, we had another family and that was, um, that was the Methodist family. And being an Arkansas United Methodist, I knew that the Methodist Behavioral Hospital was where I wanted Sam to go. Methodist Family Health shared the light of stability, peace, and hope with Annie and her family. Will you share your light with more families like hers? Please donate to the Methodist Family Health Foundation today. It is a blessing that they are here, and I eternally am grateful for them. If you would like to make a gift to Methodist Family Health and their Share the Light campaign, you may do so by making a special note in your online gift or including it on the memo line of your check. Everyone is invited by our SPRC to attend a farewell drive-in reception 
for Stephen Carr. As you saw, perhaps in your church email this week, Stephen is transitioning into and in preparing to enter into new ministries in the United Methodist Church and will be finishing his ministry with us on the 27th. We are so thankful for Stephen's eight years in ministry with us, and we want to wish him well in his future ministry opportunities. So please come and say, say farewell and share your warm greetings and your words of appreciation with Stephen next Sunday, the 27th, from 1 to 2 in the church parking lot. Well, friends, we have gathered this morning to worship, so let us gather our hearts and minds together in an attitude of worship as we begin by gathering around the Advent wreath. O oh Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O oh Lord, you brought me up from soul, from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. We light the candle of joy as a reminder that whether we climb the highest heavens or make our bed in the pit of despair, God is with us. Gracious God, our hearts leap for joy knowing that you, though almighty and everlasting, will soon be born as a humble baby, revealing to us the depths of your love for all creation. But your spirit give us the courage to, change, to share the everlasting joy of your Messiah. Amen. Will you please join us now as we sing that great hymn of our faith written by Charles Wesley, number 240, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs>
Friends, during this time of busyness, of this secular season of Christmas, we pause to remember that our Savior will be born poor and in a manger. So many want for so much, and we have the power to help them as those first visitors did so many years ago. Thank you for your continued giving towards the work of this church. The giving has enabled us to purchase new Christmas decorations that are a witness to our community, and we thank you. Holy One, this Advent season we wait in joy and we give in joy. Joy for all you have given us. Joy because of your sacred promises. Receive these generous offerings and use them to spread your joy in the world. Amen. now I invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, we ready ourselves for the coming of the Savior. We seek to prepare our hearts to receive him once again by doing our best to live out this gospel in a world in need. We seek you out in times of certainty and abundance and also in times of doubt and famine. We sometimes give in to fear. We sometimes let ourselves depend on the work of our hands far more than we would care to admit. But you are there to guide us back to you. In that trust, we lift up all those things in our hearts and those spoken here today. Guide us to walk the steps of Jesus in how we nurture each other, and ourselves in Christ's example. We seek you, O King of joy, but the world is much more complex. This is a world where we are taught to rely upon ourselves, to despair when all does not go our way, to hide ourselves when the times are challenging. You came to bring us joy and to allow that joy to spurn us to bring joy to the entire world. Creation resounds with that calling, but because we are complicated human beings, we struggle. We do not praise you by taking care of your creation. We abuse it. We do not worship you by living the example of Jesus and caring for our neighbors near and far. We blame them for issues they cannot control. Guide us to live into the difficulties of a life that proclaims joy, while also recognizing that joy for the world is not yet complete. You ask many things of us, God, but we know that we will never be alone to do your work in the world. We pray all of these things in the name of joy incarnate, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how 
still we see the light above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by yet in thy dark street shine the everlasting light the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. O morning stars together proclaim the holy birth and praises sing to God the King and peace to all on earth. O holy child of Bethlehem descend on us out our sin and enter and be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings still. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. The gospel calls us to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. Let us confess our sins together. Ever-present God, in the darkness of Mary's womb, the holy child grows. In the darkness of the world's pain, the blessed light begins to kindle. O oh God, forgive us for doubting the light you have placed within each one of us. Forgive us for ignoring the wonder of your love for us. Forgive us for underestimating the power of your presence with us. Friends, we are filled with the confidence that Christ will be born again and again into our world and into our hearts. Let the love of Christ shine a light to guide you on your journey, reminding you that you are forgiven. Amen. Good morning, church family. Merry Christmas. I love this time of year. It's my favorite season for so many reasons. The lights, the Christmas trees, the decorations, time we get to spend with our friends and our family, making things like gingerbread cookies and fudge. Mm, so yummy. But another thing about Christmas are the symbols that we see everywhere. We don't see them all year long, like, you know, holly and ivy and evergreen trees. Well, there's some other things. There's lights. There's some of those blow up things that people put in their yard sometime. But we don't really see those at church, do we? No, we have other special symbols at church. We have a stable and the manger and Mary and Joseph and something really important that we haven't talked about yet, the shepherds. But who came to tell the shepherds that very special story? That's right, angels. And today I have a very special set of angels to share with you. These are a very special gift that I received from one of my beautiful students many years ago when I taught in Georgia. Her name was Katie, and she was a special gift to her family. Just like Jesus, her family had prayed for her and were so excited when she finally came. But something special about Katie, she was tiny, very tiny. And when she was born, she was born in the month of March. And one of the things that I love about this pen is that it reminds me of her 
in our birthday month that we share because it has those little blue sparkling gems inside. Those blue sparkling gems are the birthstone aquamarine of March. Well, Christmas isn't in March, but that's when I wear that pin because it has the angels and angels remind me of what better thing? Christmas. So without further ado, let me read from our Spark Story Bible, our story today from Luke chapter two, verses one through 11-ish. And it's all about the angels who came to visit the shepherds. It goes something like this. Outside of Bethlehem, shepherds watched their sheep on the hills. Suddenly, an angel appeared to them in the sky. They looked up at the bright night and he said, don't be afraid. I bring wonderful news. The child God promised was born tonight. The shepherds listened in amazement. The twinkling stars seemed to echo each of the angel's words. Well, the angel continued, go to Bethlehem. You will find the child laying in a bed of hay. Well, suddenly many angels filled the heavens. They sang together, glory to God in the highest and peace to all people here on earth. Let's hurry, said the shepherds. The angel said the child was going to be born tonight. But what about the sheep? Another asked. Let the angels watch them, the youngest shepherd said. Yes, let the angels watch them. And the shepherds happily hurried to Bethlehem. There they are. Now, they had kind of a long journey to go and find him. And the angel was right. The shepherds found the baby Jesus asleep on a bed of hay. They told Mary and Joseph all that the angel had said. The angel said that the baby is the Messiah, the promised one. He is the one that we've waited for, they explained. But this is a stable. Would God be born here among the animals? Moo, said the cow. Bah, said the sheep. Hmm. Mary smiled and she knew that Jesus was the Emmanuel. God with us. Later, the shepherds returned to their sheep, praising God for all that they'd seen and heard, that Jesus was born. Well, friends, that's a little prequel to this Christmas story that we'll hear throughout this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you love, love, love on your family this week. I hope you have the best Christmas ever, and I can't wait because on Thursday. It's our Christmas Eve service. So be sure to come by. There's a service at three and five, and then another one you can watch from home at seven, but all of us will be waiting to see your beautiful faces. I hope you have a wonderful week. Love somebody you know. Send some sharing and love to someone else you haven't seen for a while, and I will see you soon. Bye, friends. down his sweet head the stars in the sky look down where he lay the little lord jesus asleep on the Save him.
manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The Lord of creation laid down his sweet head. The Savior of the nations laid down his This morning, as we prepare for an altogether joy, we hear the announcement of joy from the Christmas story. I'll be reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. In that region, they were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we continue to reflect upon God's word, let us go to God in an attitude of prayer. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing unto you. For you, O God, are this community's rock and redeemer. Amen. I received a very special text this week from a friend of mine. She sent a selfie to a group of our friends, and in the picture, she's wearing a mask, and she has on her glasses, and you can see that her eyes are are shiny with tears, But, but even with the tears, and even though a lot of her face is obscured by her mask, there's no mistaking the look that's on her face. It was a look of pure joy. My friend Emily Ann is a respiratory therapist at UAMS and also was in the first wave of recipients of the new COVID-19 vaccine. Emily has continued to care for trauma patients throughout the pandemic. She's cared for patients suffering with COVID and has witnessed firsthand its cruelty. She, She has shared with us that there have been days and weeks that have left her exhausted defeated, and afraid. She went on to reflect upon the experience of getting the vaccine and wrote on her social media page, the light at the end of this long, dark, scary, hard tunnel arrived today to my right arm via a pharmacy student. Emily's reflection reminds me of the words from the psalmist, the words that the Bon Tempo shared with us around the Advent wreath. Though morning may last for the night, our joy comes in the morning. Through, after months of mourning, joy came to Emily Ann and, and many other healthcare workers in the form of a vaccine. The joy that Emily Ann feels, that felt, and continues to feel is a deep joy. It's, it's deeper than the joy I feel when, when I receive a great gift, or deeper than the joy I feel when I have one of my favorite meals, or even have a good belly laugh. The joy that, that, they, that she feels, that they feel, is rooted in life. Rooted in the promise that the vaccine holds. The vaccine brings joy as it represents um, the possibility or that it could mark the, the beginning of the end of a pandemic that's claimed more than 300,000 American lives. Her joy is rooted in life and it reminds me of the complexity of joy. 
We, we experience joy, or joy springs up in the goodness that is. But joy is also experienced in the shift from the darkness that was. We certainly know that the pandemic has created a long season of darkness. This, this pandemic has felt like a prison for so many of us as we've, we've lived our lives abiding by certain restrictions for our, to ensure our safety and the safety of others. But these, but these restrictions and this darkness has prevented us or interrupted us from being able to, to experience the joy that springs up with what is. It's prevented us from having, having a, a delight, from the joy of life, the joy that God wants for us, the delight in life that God wants for us. For God does want us to have delight in life. We hear this in the creation story. You'll remember in the creation story, at the, as God spends those days with the work of creation, at the end of each day, God surveys all that was created that day, all new life. And God looks at the new life and declares it is good. This word good is delight. So we have we, we see this image of, of God taking a moment at the end of each day to delight in life. And that is joy. Joy is life. Joy is delighting in life. And yes, there are, there are circumstances outside of our control, like COVID, that can interrupt our experience of joy as they interrupt our life as they bring seasons of darkness in our life. But there are also other interruptions to our joy, other interruptions to our experience of delight in life. John Wesley challenges us that, that one, of those, one of those ways that we might have our joy interrupted one that is within our control, is our own sin. Both John and his brother Charles wrote a lot about the joy of life and the joy of God and the, the assurance that joy is found in our assurance of salvation. Our joy is found in the assurance of our forgiveness of sins. We, we heard this joy in a song just a moment ago, the, a song written by Charles Wesley, Hark the Herald Angel Sings. As we, we hear that, that beautiful line of God and sinners reconciled. This reminds us that, that there is no true or, or full delight in life, no full experience of joy without forgiveness of sins, without the assurance of our salvation. This is the good news that we celebrate at Christmas, the good news of great joy that God has entered into our world, becoming one of us, not only to meet us in our, in our brokenness, in our pain, but also to bring to us salvation and forgiveness of our sins. This news is brought first to the shepherds, those who were tending their flocks near the place where Jesus was born. Now, it shouldn't be lost on us that the first to hear the good news of great joy, to hear the angel's proclamation, I am bringing you good news of great joy that unto you this day is born a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. It shouldn't be lost on us that the first to hear to receive this message was the sh were the shepherds. Now, the shepherds <laughs> weren't exactly the ones you would expect to, to, to be the recipients or the first recipients of such a royal and kingly decree. Shepherds rarely, rarely if ever, received important declarations. Whenever there were royal announcements, shepherds would hear about them, you know, third, fourth, or fifth, or sixth hand. 
They were never the first to receive the good news. They were never the first to receive royal messages. Because shepherds were the undesirables of society. They were the homeless, dirty men who cared for dirty animals. They were ritually impure and socially downtrodden. It shouldn't be lost on us that the good news of great joy came first to the ones whom society had deemed as unworthy. Because Could there be any better place for that good news to start than with those who were deemed unworthy? Because how many times do you and I feel unworthy? How many times have have you and I felt unworthy of this good news of great joy? How many times have we felt undeserving of salvation? How many times have we felt unworthy of God's love, of Jesus' forgiveness? How many times have we felt dirty from our past sins? How many times have we felt undesirable because of our past mistakes? The good news of great joy is that forgiveness is available to all people, starting with those whom society has deemed unworthy, starting with those who even feel the most unworthy themselves. Throughout this series, we have been challenging ourselves to move from having an almost Christmas to an altogether Christmas. We've taken on this challenge as we have received the gifts that Christ brings, the gifts of peace, hope, love, and joy. And we've noted the difference between an almost Christmas and an altogether Christmas is in how we receive these gifts, what we do with these gifts. The difference between an almost gift and an altogether gift rests on our response and our willingness to share that gift with others. If the gift is, if we receive the gift and if it stops with us, it is but an almost gift, an almost hope, an almost peace, an almost love, or an almost joy. But if we receive this gift from Christ and offer it to others, it becomes an altogether gift. And in doing so, we offer ourselves as a gift back to God. So the same is true this morning for the gift of love or for the gift of joy. An altogether joy is a gift that we have not only received, but a gift that we have shared. We receive the gift of joy as we are able to experience and to delight in the fullness of life the fullness of life that is made possible by the assurance of our salvation, the assurance of our forgiveness of sins. And so we share the gift of joy as we offer to them the gift of forgiveness. Maybe this Christmas, the best gift that you can offer to someone else is to forgive them. Maybe there's Maybe there's been a bitterness or a resentment within your home, a bitterness and a resentment that that started with the tensions and the stress of living within the pandemic. But maybe the gift of forgiveness can be extended to a loved one. Maybe the gift of forgiveness can be extended or offered to someone who, who hurt you in more than just a minor way recently. Maybe it can be to someone who wronged you or hurt you badly in the past. Maybe the person that you're being called to forgive, maybe maybe they know they hurt you. Maybe they don't. Maybe you'll be able to tell them, I forgive you. Or maybe you won't. 
I always mention whenever I talk about for offering forgiveness to someone else, it's always important to remember when you forgive someone, you are not saying that what they did to you, how they hurt you, how they wronged you, you are not saying that it's, it's now okay. Rather, when you forgive someone, you are releasing your own anger, bitterness, and resentment toward them. You are releasing yourself from those traps. And you're freeing yourself from the burden of judgment. It becomes clear that as we talk about offering this gift to others, there's a blessing in it for us as well. Several years ago, I gave my husband Nathan a grill for Christmas. And ever since then, I've said, that is the best gift I've ever given myself. I've grown to think of forgiveness in the same way. As I offer this gift to others, I receive a blessing as well. I receive a blessing as, as I make room in my heart, room in my heart for true joy. So friends, may we prepare our hearts for Christ. May we make room for joy. May we experience an altogether joy. May we receive this gift. And most of all, may we share it with others. Amen.
Well, friends, it's been a joy to worship with you this morning and a privilege to spend the season of Advent with you as we have all prepared our hearts for the coming of Christ at Christmas. I look forward to celebrating Christ's arrival with you on Christmas Eve at any uh, one of our three services, whether it be in person at one of our drive-in services at three or five o'clock or online for our seven o'clock Facebook Live service. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, don't forget to stop by the church on Tuesday or Wednesday to pick up your worship bag to uh, complement your worship service. But as you go from this place, may you receive this benediction. Friends, we have received from Christ the gifts of peace, hope, joy, and love. Go from this place to bear witness to these gifts and to bear witness to Christ, the giver of these gifts, and the one who reveals to us how to live as children of the light. Go in peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.